Good afternoon everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome to this video. What I'm gonna discuss in this is the whole sales cycle from start acquisition of a client to picking up a placement. I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I do. And also, if I don't find anyone, what you should be doing that other recruiters don't do. So if you, you've had a client on board and you haven't found anyone, I wanna show you exactly what to do to keep that client warm and eventually still make a placement, even if it's six months later. So it's going to be, I don't want to say um, sort of self-explanatory or common sense, but a lot of people don't do it. And I don't know why they don't do it, but this will help set you apart. So the first thing you want to do, I've talked about it a lot on this channel, is, you know, pick up a client. Emails, cold calls, whatever you want to do, do it. And that's probably the best way to, you know, do it through email. Pick up a client and what you do is you send, you know, you have an agreement. They might say, look, we're looking for someone. You negotiate rates either on the phone or an email. And they say to you, look, we can work off 15% um, for an engineer, let's say, um, an electrical engineer. You say, okay, great. Um, and what you want to do is you want to send your terms and conditions to them. So your terms and conditions will be sent via DocuSign, um, PandaDoc, any electrical signature sort of feature. I have a link in the description to my terms and conditions, which you can download and use willy nilly as you like. So once that's done, you send your terms and they sign it. Only after that point, you start to work on a position and send candidates. If they say to you, please send me, um, you know, candidates and then we'll do terms and conditions, don't work with them. They are just gonna waste your time. I have never ever, and I've made a lot of placements, I've never made a placement or got to an interview stage with somebody that didn't sign my terms and conditions. It is the most common trick that most companies do to get a free candidate. Don't do it. I'm not saying all of them do it, but it, chances are that you, you, know, you want to avoid that if you can. So once you've got your terms signed, your agreement is in place. You are free to start working on a position. What you can do is obviously, I don't want to go into detail, but you start to go to market with their job. And what you do is you tell the client, I will be in touch within three to four days, even if I don't have a candidate for you. So you wanna make sure that you are still updating that client. Imagine their end, what they hear is they sign the terms and conditions, they say, okay, thanks, we'll work on a position. They don't hear anything. It, I mean, if you ordered a, a mobile phone, for example, and they said, yeah, we'll be in touch, and you don't hear anything for two weeks, and you're like, where's my phone? That's the same thing, and the same, exact exact thing that will happen with the clients you want to keep them updated at least once a week i used to do it two every two weeks but now i think once a week i've never had anyone say look you don't have to update us every week that's no problem at all so don't don't be afraid to at least drop them an email and just say look we're working hard on a position because no other agency is going to do that you want to make sure you are doing that so once that's done let's say you don't find a client or a candidate, you want to make sure you're still updating the client, even if it's an email on Friday afternoon or Monday morning saying, look, make them feel like they're the only client you're working with. I know that sounds silly, but it really does help build that trust and that relationship. And the more they hear from you without, you know, the, the common thing that clients say is we only hear from recruiters when they want money. So keep them updated. Don't just, you know, contact them when they want. Oh, have you seen my CV? Have you had a look at it? And that's probably what you want to do. So let's say you've set up, you've found a CV and what you want to do is you want to send the CV in an email. I, I mean, I wish I was on a computer so I could show. You want to send an email, not just with the CV attached. You want to say, hi, Mr. Client, please find attached, you know, John Smith's profile in, in reference to the electrical engineer position. And I want to have a four point summary um, below on that. What the summary will do is say, look, he's got six years experience. This will be on the email with the CV attached. This will say, he's got six years experience, lives 20 minutes away, he's got one month's notice period, and he wants 35 grand, yeah? If he's had experience, if they're looking for a specific experience sector or whatever, you wanna home in on that. You wanna say, look, he's had six years experience, he's had experience with this, 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 because the CV will never do the candidate justice. And you wanna put that in there, and you wanna give a good service to the client. So they say, okay, great, he's had this, he ticks all our boxes. Also, it helps you clarify because you, we, our job is to service our clients the best we can. And if they say, they look at the CV and go, oh, he's not good enough. Actually, he's perfect for the job. So you don't want them to miss a trick. I'm not saying just push through everything you can. 
I wouldn't say even sell the client candidate. It's just really just a client is, you know, they're busy at times. They really just want someone and they just want to look at the, the email and just see it. So give that extra bit of service and you'll probably, you know, it help you to, you know, ask the right questions because you want to feed back to the client in the end. Once the CV has gone across, what will happen is a client will say to you, okay, perfect, would like to interview. So you call the client candidate and you say, look, and I just asked, do you have a time in mind? They might say 10 o'clock on Friday, perfect. Call the candidate, book it in, send an email confirmation to both of them. So you want to say, John is booked in um, on Friday, 10 a.m. And to the client, and you want to say to the candidate, you'll be meeting, let's say John, John as well, two Johns. You'll be meeting John, who's the regional sales manager or, or the engineering manager, whatever. And you'll meet with him, 10 a.m., Perfect. You set the interview up. You confirm either 24 hours by four. Either give John a call. Hey, good luck, John, for your interview. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you're running late, let me know as well. Yeah, try not to be late, though. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's pr pretty much what you do. Fingers crossed he gets a job. Now, after that, you want to you want to call the candidate first and you want to see the candidate's boards because I, I go for positions and I, I, I know I'm going to get the job sort of thing. But if, if it's a skilled person like that, he has to meet his criteria as well. So he says, look, you call him, he says, what, well, it looks wonderful, it looks perfect, I'd like to start working there, yeah? Perfect. Get onto the client, we really like him, we'll discuss it with the team and we'll let you know. So you just chase up the client and you say, look, have you made a decision um, off of that? And they'll say, yeah, we'd like to offer the position. If they offer the position, um, you go back to uh, John, you give him the terms, this is how much they're gonna offer, they're gonna offer you 65 grand. And what they want to do is, you know, start you within a month, whatever. Yeah, that's done. Once that's done, on the day he starts, you send your invoice across and you put the start date. And you even ask the client when you talk to them and say, just just for when he starts, do it, does the invoice go to you or does it go to your accounts team? And if so, what's their email address? And that's how you do it. And that's pretty much the whole process. And with that, there has been and now I want to sidetrack. What happens if he doesn't get the job? What do you do then? Because a lot of people, you know, there's no point in me doing a video. There's going to be probably four times. you will, uh, Every four interviews that don't happen, you probably get one placement out of it. So what happens if he doesn't show up? Obviously, you let the client know. I let the client know before. So if John called me and he says, yeah, yeah I'm still going. And I, there was a little doubt in my mind. I'll call the client and I'll say, or I'd email them and I'll say, as far as I know, John's still going to show up Friday at 10 a.m. However, I was a little on the fence about his commitment. So I don't want to say I don't want to cancel it just yet because chances are he's going to show up. But I just want to preempt it before I'll be in touch with him on the on the morning just to wish him luck and make sure he gets there. OK, um, and there's a lot more you can do. You can send him across, you know, Google Maps, send him a picture of the actual building. So it helps him out. So he's got no excuses. Oh, I was late or I didn't show up. Wait, I sent you bloody you know, I sent you all the information you need. I sent you the bus route, what, whatever it is. So do those things that give a better service and you, you will get calls back of, you know, I've had people crying to me on the phone saying, you know, you've changed my life and, you know, grown men saying, look, you work so hard to help me out. And so, and clients say, yeah, you're fantastic. You, you know, you're head and shoulders above the rest and we want to give you exclusivity or you know, I asked them, can you give me exclusivity? And they're like, yeah, your head and shoulders above the rest. It does happen sometimes. It doesn't happen all the time. So once the invoice is sent, that's your job done. And what you want to do is obviously check in with John, see if he's okay. And also check in with a client and just say, look, courtesy call, 30 seconds. What has been happening with John? Has he shown up? Has he shown up late? Ask these questions that are just, you know, having a little laugh with them. And I would appreciate that. Don't just do it in your rebate period because that's a client for life not just a client that you've got a placement from. Chances are they'll go to you before they even advertise the role. And, you know, those are the positions that you really want. You don't want other agencies calling up saying you've you've seen them advertising like we done at the start. If you give a good enough service, they'll feel, hold on a minute, we got budget. What's the point of us advertising? We're not going to get anywhere. Let's call CADS. He'll make the placement for us. That's the best way to go about it. So, Things can go wrong in recruitment, things will go wrong in recruitment, but the thing that you want to sort of home in on is the whole process needs to be walked watertight and you can't be like any other recruiter. This is how it goes for recruiters. 
um, on the negative side. It's, you know, you get the term signed, they don't find anyone for two weeks. They don't even let the client know. The client's sitting there thinking, what have they done? It's, you know, we ain't going to get anyone. Let's onboard a few more agencies. And if you give a good service, you know, you never have that. If you're getting updated, they're like, we don't need another agency. You cut down your competition dramatically. If you say to them, I'm still working on a position, they're like, this guy's still working on it. There's no point getting another agency. If they don't hear, they're going to be like, hmm, you know, that guy's gone quiet. We will we'll use another agency, see if they can give a better service and actually find us someone. So that's what most client agencies do. And there's a reason why employers will use a lot of agencies because they don't hear. If you've got someone ringing them, you know, three, four times a week, um, they're going to know you're, you're just working on that position. If you hear from them once a week, they'll know you're working on it. So, and <clears throat> they don't check in after placement as well. So they just get their money and then they run off. And that's why clients don't work with these crappy, you know, recruiters. They don't like it. I wouldn't like it. They're paying big money. I know it's a very hard job and we do we put a lot of work in, but they're paying big money. Please try and understand what the clients do and what they sort of serve. If you understand that and you can service them much better than anyone else, um, it is a customer service gig as well. It's not just a sales role. There is customer service elements in it. So I'm rambling on now, but you get the message. Give a good service. Keep your clients updated and you'll do very well in this sector. And it works same with the cl candidate side as well. If a candidate, you know, you've engaged with and send you a CV, drop them a 30 second email. Have, I've got an email, a few email templates I just bang out. You know, it's a case of, John, we spoke, you know, Wednesday, 10th of August. Um, I'm still looking for you. Are you still looking? Yeah, cool. I'll keep you engaged. And he'll call you back. He'll engage with you. So get out there. Give a good service and you, the placements will come, believe me. If you've got any questions, let me know. Like I said, the link in the description below. And yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know. Take care.